Hello everyone and welcome back to the glorious kingdom of Duloc. We're playing as Lord Farquaad, King Farquaad at this point. We've already taken over far, far away. We've already married the Adventure Time Princess. Everything is going great. We have a formidable blockade here, so we're going to have to stop our expansion in this direction and start going in this direction. Enchantia is pretty powerful, but we will be able to get more powerful pretty fast, so we will thrive ourselves into the ever realm and start conquering we'll also to do this amazingly named knights of tomorrow focus to get some armored units we've already researched a few armored units though so we're okay for the most part we haven't yet started producing them though because I want to have advanced engines researched first I've also had to delay our conquest because we're being justified on that's scary kind of I don't know what to think they have a much bigger army than us, but I think we have the superior forces. Maybe. I guess they have modern technology and this girl's academy. So I I don't know. I guess they might be pretty good. The Candy Kingdom also just decided to stop being our puppet and is now in a faction with the Underground in the Mushroom Kingdom. That's not really ideal, but I guess there's not anything that we can do besides justifying on them later. Dio goes to war with the Joe Stars. This is crazy. Anyways, we're kind of in a war ourselves too. It seems like we're going to do okay though because they don't have many divisions on our border. See, modern technology is actually terrible. We have superior Superior medieval technology, yeah. Lord Farquaad, the power of marriage and love and shortness. Okay, and we're kind of at a standstill now. They have a river defense up here. Down here, things aren't going very well. We don't have amazing supply. We can't break these light tanks. We could probably take this tile, but there's no real point in taking this tile. I'd rather take this tile to encircle this tile. We'll just have to wait until we have a heavy tank. Uh, yeah. We'll just make the division, and then once we have enough heavy tank stuff, we can make one heavy tank. We just need to produce a hundred 152 more heavy tanks. That's not too many. We're producing about one a day, so that's about 152 days. Not too bad. And then we'll have a division that can take this tile. Yeah, we also too need to go into a higher conscription law. It might be best to do service by requirement because it might be a long time before we're at war with someone strong enough to go onto that conscription law. Since we're only neutrality, we can only go into conscription laws when we're at war with a powerful enemy. Therefore, we might just need to take the minus construction speed thing. I don't know. We'll have to think about it. Some of these spirits though we get here are good. This just gives us a flat 10% organization and 10% recovery rate. That's good. I don't think we have many other ones that are that good. I guess this would have given us 10% recruitable population, but we went with quality over quantity, so. Oh well. I also just realized too this is a level 5 fort, but I think our new heavy tank will be able to break into it. It seems like it's going well. Yeah, level 5. Five, four to nothing for a good heavy tank. We're also going to be making planes soon. I know we're so technologically advanced, it's crazy. We probably should get radio. That's a pretty vital technology, but um, maybe it would be best to get support equipment first. I've kind of been producing support equipment, but I haven't made a single support company. I guess we'll research engineers. Maybe maintenance for our heavy tanks. Nah, engineers for all of our divisions is probably best. Yeah. Okay, we're kind of breaking through here in the west. Hopefully we'll take this supply hub that's there, and then we should be in a better position to maybe win this. They're bringing light tanks over, which is kind of bad, but my heavy tank is a lot better than the light tanks. It's just that we have no supply. If we take the supply hub here, though, then they'll be the ones with no supply, and luckily they haven't put a light tank in the supply hub yet. Okay, now they put one, but it was too late. <laughs> we'll just connect to the railway, and then we will have supply. Yeah, now we'll just keep encircling them until they're weak enough that they lose. We also need to make a plane too, though maybe we shouldn't be making the inner war planes and wait until we have better models. Okay, and the battle plan is finally back on. We can get another land doctrine too, so we'll get that. Make our tanks even better. Speaking of tanks, we can probably train one or two more tank divisions now. Yeah, and this will be easy. We'll just take their ports and then we'll have to invade these two countries that are at war with each other, which will make it a bit easier, but either way, we still have to invade them 
them to get to their other core territories, and then we should capitulate them. They've also started colonizing land over here. They're just colony states though, so it doesn't really matter. And here we go with the boars down here finished up. We are safe to expand back in the north. The Western Kingdom also took out Von Karma, so I guess Von Karma wasn't actually that big of a deal. Either way, since we control the Everrealm Gate, that makes attacking into these two countries much easier. We'll go into Marswick first, and then we'll go into Islesworth. It should be easy, especially with our heavy tanks. They will just destroy anything they come in contact with instantly. And we will start building planes eventually too, that'll give us another huge advantage. Like a lot of countries have planes, but we'll make better planes than the planes that these countries have. I think we also have a lot of planes in stockpile too from some of the countries that we capitulated. I guess not many, but some. And yes, as expected, things are going well here. We're just able to battle plan with our infantry and I've been microwing the tanks a little bit, but it's kind of unnecessary and supply is so bad that the tanks aren't really moving fast. Either way, this will be done soon. Then we'll go into Islesworth. Yeah, and Islesworth is just as weak with the bigger border too. That makes things even more simple for us. The real challenge though will be attacking Enchantia. Yeah, we'll at least get to them before their civil war is finished, but it's still not going to be an extremely easy ordeal attacking into them. Also, lots of building railways. None of the railways between the different countries were really attached. We're kind of having to build them ourselves. Luckily, we have a bunch of factories, so it's kind of easy. And no divisions on the border. That's great. <laughs> they're, they're probably trying to finish up the Civil War really fast before we destroy them, but that's not really going to work out for them. We will declare on Princess Amber too, because we don't want to just finish this Civil War and then she annexes everything and then we have to invade everything all over again. But yes, they're no match for us. We're easily going to win. Our real fights are going to be the ones over here. Flower Hill has a war goal against us, though I don't know if they're going to declare war considering their current situation. Not too many railroads in this part of the country, though. The AI was very smart in not building railroads to make things harder for invaders attacking from the east. They were very smart. I'm sure the AI purposely was doing that. The bloody civil war in Enchantia has come to an end. Although thousands have died and the country lies in ruin, the kingdom is once again united and a new era has begun. Was it worth? It was worth. And very nice too, we've now formed the Empire of Duloc officially with Enchantia and all the minor Enchantia kingdoms annexed. We also took over the Western Kingdom in Japanifornia. We were able to form the Great Empire of Duloc. We still need to get our revenge though on the Candy Kingdom and our wife for betraying us. That's very sad. We'll make things right though. Our main antagonist now is this Democrat block of nations. I think led by Roger Doofenshmirtz. I'm not sure who the leader is. Yeah, it is Roger Doofenshmirtz. Yeah, we'll have to take him out so that we can eventually get to the rest of the Candy Kingdom's faction. Before we declare this war though, we'll need to build up some supply hubs and then we should be good to attack them. Yeah, and they're not being so smart. They're not being very tactical. This isn't a very good idea. I don't know what they're trying to accomplish here. I won't even look at the battle. I'll just look at this screen. Watch this number go up infinitely. They don't even have that many divisions. They've already almost lost as much manpower as they have fielded. That's crazy. And they lost. Once we moved into Danville, the entire faction capitulated. That's good. And we have the most war score, so we should be able to take most everything, at least enough that we can get to the underground in the Mushroom Kingdom. Anyways, Flower Hill decided to finally declare on us, but we've been able to hold them off right here so far, so we're still able to attack the Candy Kingdom. And this should be pretty easy, I think. I don't foresee any problems annexing them. We'll just need to finish them up first, and then we can bring our main tank core over to the Mushroom Kingdom. And anyways, with that wrapped up, that's where we'll leave things off for today. I think this is a very powerful position for the Empire of Duloc to be in. Dio Brando's empire is the only one that even matches our very, very powerful empire. We're definitely not compensating for anything also, very important note. Anyways, I'll see you all next time.